In this episode, we are going to systematically read the ECG. Now this helps during your vivas. Say for example, you find a very difficult ECG, then systematically elaborating that ECG might just help you clear the exam. So let's begin. Step 1. Check the rhythm. Place a paper on ECG strip right on top most point of R wave and mark two successive R waves. Now tally the markings on paper with other R waves or use a caliper but oh well, who keeps a caliper in pocket? So first ECG strip, we have four large boxes or 20 small boxes between successive R waves at different points. So we declare the rhythm as regular. In the second example, we have 11 small boxes between successive R waves followed by 16, followed again by 11, followed again further by 16. So a regular pattern of irregularity. Hence, regularly irregular. In the third strip, every successive R wave interval is different, with no pattern. So we call it irregularly irregular. Note that the R wave is showing ventricular depolarization. For atrial side, we can do the same method for successive P waves. Step 2. Check the heart rate. There are many ways. I'll show you two methods here. Number 1 times 10 method. Remember in episode 2, we showed how 5 large boxes make 1 second. Let's take a 6 second strip, meaning 30 large boxes. For ease, I'm labeling from 1 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 large boxes, making a 6 seconds on strip. Now note number of R waves in this 6 second strip. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. 7 times 10 equals 70 beats per minute. So it is called times 10 method. This method is mostly used for irregular rhythms. Next method is the sequence method and I love it because it's easier for me. In this method, we calculate number of large boxes between R waves. One box means 300 beats per minute, two boxes 150, five boxes would mean 60 beats per minute. In the black wave below, there is one box between two successive R waves, meaning heart rates around 300 beats per minute. In next wave, there are two boxes between R waves, meaning 150 beats per minute. So in the above strip, there are four large boxes between successive R waves, hence rate is around 75 beats per minute. So you have to remember the sequence and that's all. Now remember five large boxes makes one second. This means 25 small boxes or 25 millimeters. So the correct rate of ECG paper moving in ECG machine is 25 millimeters per second. This is printed always on ECG. Why I am saying this is because in this picture you can see upper wave at 25 millimeters per second and lower at 50 millimeters per second. Although they are same ECGs on different speeds, the heart rate calculation changes and faster strip is misinterpreted as slower heart rate. I had this kind of ECG in Viva. I confidently declared it bradycardia without seeing the strip was moving at 50 millimeters per second. Well, I almost failed. Step 3. The P wave. Ask yourself, can you see P waves? In upper ECG, you can clearly distinguish P waves. So yes, a big no in lower two ECG examples. First, we see atrial fibrillatory waves. In last example, SVT with R waves and T waves, no P waves are seen. So if P wave is present, Next question is about its shape, its size, its configuration. So we have discussed this in episode 2. Depolarization moves from SA node to AV node along lead axis 2. So positive P wave deflection is seen with first half of P wave showing right atrium and second half showing the left atrial depolarization. This P wave is within 2.5 mm height as normal. In right atrial enlargement, there will be notched P wave with height greater than 2.5 mm. In isolated left atrial enlargement, like mitral stenosis, greater area has to be covered by depolarizing wave in left atrium, so longer time taken. This will produce a bifid P wave. But what if the origin of impulse is down near to AV node, the impulse spreads retrograde or upwards? This would go against the direction of lead 2, so inverted P wave. Third question you must ask is, are all P waves similar? For example, if you see different shapes and sizes like positive, biphasic, negative, it means 
there are multiple sites of origin of impulse, which happens in multifocal atrial tachycardias. Finally, ask yourself, is there a P wave for every QRS complex? In the waveform in blue, you can see a P wave before QRS, but one isolated P wave that did not generate a QRS. This means a drop beat, which happens when impulse coming from SA node is blocked at AV node. In other words, a heart block. On the contrary, what if there is no P for QRS? It means impulse originated somewhere through the conduction pathway other than the SA node. Let's say it originated around the AV node. So it would spread to atrium and ventricle at the same time. Since in atrium the spread is upwards against Li2 direction, the P wave is inverted. But for ventricle with narrow QRS, it means normal forward depolarization through the ventricular pathway. So a positive QRS. The P wave is there, but we cannot see it because it is hidden under the big QRS complex. Step 4. The PR interval. Normal PR interval is 0.12 seconds to 0.2 seconds. This makes 3 to 5 small boxes between start of P to the start of Q. Like here, it is 4 small boxes, so 0.16 which is normal. In the second ECG, you can see 6 small boxes making PR interval. So it is type of a heart block. In the last ECG, the PR interval is barely 2 small boxes. Hence, a shortened PR interval suggesting pre-excitation or as the term indicates, excitation of ventricle before normal time which can only happen if we remove the AV node delays. In other words, extra nodal pathway of impulse transmission. Step 5. The QRS complex. Ask yourself duration of QRS. Less than 0.1 second is narrow. Greater than 0.12 second or 3 small squares is broad QRS. In above ECG, it is 2 small boxes wide, so narrow QRS. Next, ask yourself, are all the QRS you are seeing same in size, duration and shape? And the third question, is there a P wave before every QRS? In this ECG, for example, one QRS is following a P wave. It is narrow and normal. This is followed by broad QRS greater than 0.1 seconds and no P wave precedes. Meaning, it has element of ectopic origin and is not following the normal faster conduction pathway. In lower ECG, there is no discernible P wave, only narrow QRS and T waves. So origin is the junction, not SA node. And we have already shown how P wave is present inverted but hidden in dominant QRS complex in these scenarios. Below is atrial flutter ECG. The flutter waves are evident and QRS is narrow. In the last ECG, the QRS are broad. I cannot see the P wave. It could be ventricular tachycardia or it could be SVT. How to differentiate? We will discuss in subsequent episodes. Step 6. Check the T wave. The T wave of ventricular repolarization is normally less than 5 mm in limb leads and less than 10 mm in chest leads. In this ECG, you can see T wave rising greater than 15 mm or 3 large boxes in chest lead. These tall T waves occur in hyperkalemia. Another configuration of T wave is called hyperacute T wave, which is tall, broad, and it may indicate onset of ST elevation MI. Inverted T waves may signify past myocardial infarction. Step 7 The QT interval. Normal value between 0.36 to 0.44 seconds, which is around 9 to 11 small boxes. Step 8 Observe other features like excess deviation between lead 1 and AVF. For that concept, I am giving the link in right upper corner. Let's revise the 8 steps on this ECG strip for revision. Now remember, the more practice you do on ECG, the more you will remember. So we have step 1, 2, 3 as rhythm, rate, the P wave, the PR interval, the QRS complex, the T wave, the QT interval, and any other anomaly that we see and in the end we will interpret so step one rhythm with the paper we make the markings and tally with other r waves so all the r waves seem fine and regular for the rate we have 3.5 large boxes between successive r waves 
so that's around 300 150 100 it's approximately around 90 beats per minute the p wave seems normal less than 2.5 millimeters and round its configurations are fine there are no differences in shape so p wave is normal the PR interval from start of P to start of Q has three to four small boxes. So that makes it around more than 0.12 seconds, which is normal. The QRS seems normal. Its duration is less than 0.1 seconds, roughly around two small boxes. So it's normal narrow QRS. The T wave is normal, less than five millimeters in size, round, and normal configuration so T wave is normal as well for QT interval there are around 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 small boxes which makes up around 0.4 seconds so that is normal as well there is no other anomaly that I can see in this ECG so I declare it as normal sinus rhythm in this ECG the rhythm seems very regular so I would write it's a regular rhythm the heart rate by one two this is five large box this is ten large box so 20 and 30 large boxes make six second strip so in this six second strip i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so twelve into ten is 120 so rate is around 120 beats per minute I can see the P waves, the P waves are normal in shape and every P wave is followed by QRS meaning sinus rhythm. So P wave is normal. The PR interval from start of P to start of Q is around 0 0.12 seconds which is normal. The QRS complex is narrow, barely two small boxes so less than 0 0.0 8 seconds right so two small boxes T wave is normal the QT interval is normal within range there is no other anomaly I can see so it is sinus tachycardia since the heart rate is greater than 100 let's just go quickly through this ECG now you can see the rhythm is quite irregular there is almost 1.5 large box between these two R waves. Let's randomly pick another. This is almost one. There is almost uh, two to 2.5 large boxes, right? So I declare it as irregularly irregular, right? What about the rate? So we said that for irregular rhythms, it's better to have a six second strip. So let's go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So this makes a 6 second strip of 30 large boxes, right? And in these we have how many R waves? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So times 10 method, it turns out 14 into 10, 140 beats per minute. Can you see any PR, uh, any P wave? I can't see any P wave. These are fibrillatory waves, right? So no P wave is seen. PR interval since no P wave is seen we cannot comment the QRS seems narrow if you calculate between these two it's barely two small boxes so almost 0 0.08 seconds which is normal this means that the impulse is being traveled through the normal pathway the T wave I cannot discern the T wave so I cannot comment here the QT interval of course the T wave is not discernible so the final interpretation from this ECG irregularly irregular fibrillatory waves is AF or atrial fibrillation. So how about this wave? Well, we can see that the distance between R waves is quite uniform. 
so rhythm seems regular the rate of course we do not have 30 large boxes here in width so to calculate rate i would rather use the box method or the sequence method now i can take one qrs that is on thick line and i can see where it falls in the interval so there is one large box and almost one more so this is roughly around 250 beats per minute since one large box is 300 two large boxes makes 150 the third thing is p wave i cannot see any p wave so p wave is not available pr interval cannot comment because there is no p wave seen the qrs is narrow and it's almost 0 0.08 seconds so normal this means that a normal conduction pathway has been followed t wave yes t waves i can see the t waves they are less than 5 mm so t wave seems normal the qt interval is well within range no other thing that i can see so basically one thing is clear when there is no p wave so no sinus rhythms right sa node is eliminated this means that the beat is coming somewhere from av node maybe and it is going downwards into the ventricle causing narrow complex or narrow qrs complex right so this is an svt or supraventricular tachycardia so on beginner level and even on pro level practice to look at ecg in stepwise manner the importance you will know once you see a difficult ecg so a systematic stepwise approach helps you reach a diagnosis or at least brings you closer to a diagnosis with time and experience this will help you big time in the coming episodes we will discuss conduction defects and their managements stay tuned